On November 21st, 1873, the French ocean liner Villa du Havre was crossing the Atlantic from the U.S. to Europe with 313 passengers on board. Among the passengers were Mrs. Spafford and their four daughters. Although Mr. Spafford had planned to go with his family, he found it necessary to stay in Chicago to help solve an unexpected business problem. He told his wife he would join her and their children in Europe a few days later. His plan was to take another ship. About four days into the crossing of the Atlantic, the Villa du Havre collided with a powerful iron-hulled Scottish ship, the Loch Urn. Suddenly, all those on board were in grave danger. Anna hurriedly brought her four children to the deck. She knelt there with Annie, Margaret Lee, Bessie, and Tanetta and prayed that God would spare them if that could be his will, or to make them willing to endure whatever awaited them. Within approximately 12 minutes, the ship slipped beneath the dark waters of the Atlantic, carrying with it 226 of its passengers, including the four Spafford children. A sailor, rowing a small boat over the spot where the ship went down, spotted a woman floating on a piece of the wreckage. It was Anna still alive. He pulled her into the boat, and they were picked up by another large vessel, which nine days later landed them in Wales. From there, she wired her husband a message which began, saved alone. What shall I do? Mr. Spafford later framed the telegram and placed it in his office. Another of the ship's survivors, Pastor Weiss, later recalled Anna saying, God gave me four daughters. Now they have been taken from me. Someday I will understand why. Mr. Spafford, booking passage on the next available ship, left to join his grieving wife. With the ship about four days out, the captain called Spafford to his cabin and told him they were over the place where his children went down. According to Bertha Spafford Vester, daughter born after the tragedy. Spafford wrote this song while on this journey. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Have you ever experienced peace that passed all understanding? Have you ever been in a position of brokenness, in pain, and yet within your spirit there was peace? In the most difficult or tragic times of your life, have you been able to say, it is well with my soul? In July of 2004, I was standing in a work trailer in Altoona, Wisconsin. As I was looking for some tools, my brother-in-law came in with an upset look on his face and let me know that what had taken place is something we'd all been expecting. My grandpa had passed away. As he left the trailer, I began to cry. He was the first of my grandparents to pass away. And and as the flood of emotions came and as I began to cry, I felt the overwhelming presence of God fill that trailer. And I experienced for the first time that I can fully remember his peace that passed all understanding. I was experiencing grief and yet there was peace. Peace is described as an agreement or treaty between warring or antagonistic nations to end hostilities and abstain from further fighting or antagonism, the normal freedom from civil commotion and violence of a community, public order and security. What the world understands as peace is a lack of fighting, lack of distress, lack of disharmony, or a lack of frustration. What we see around our world and nation today is anything but peace. We don't have to look far to understand that not only are world powers not at peace, but people, individuals, are not at peace. The world believes that it can find peace by finding zin, finding inner balance, becoming one with nature. 
This idea of peace as being something you can attain by doing certain stretches or through meditations is nothing but false doctrines from false religions. This world believes you can take a journey to find inner peace. The world believes that there is peace in each and every one of us. We just have to find it. We just have to do some self-reflection. The world believes you can find peace by understanding yourself and finding yourself, your true identity. But what the Prince of Peace says is that you will find peace when you lose yourself in Him. What the Prince or Master of Peace says is that when you lose your life, then you will find it. Jesus said in John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. The truth is what the world gives is only temporary. It's a deception. What the world gives will only end in hurt. The only true peace comes from the Prince of Peace. Over the next few moments, I want to take you on a journey to help you have a better understanding of why and how. We can say, it is well with my soul, even when everything around us is full of chaos. Over the past several weeks, we've been working our way through Isaiah 9-6. And I'm sure if you've been with us, then you have the scripture memorized. It is a powerful statement coming from the prophet Isaiah, foretelling of the coming Messiah, when he says in 9-6, for unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. I want us to understand today that Isaiah 9-6 isn't just a bunch of jumbled up phrases. Isaiah didn't just throw this scripture together, but it is written this way for a reason. It is written this way because it is a progressive revelation of who Jesus Christ is. When we first become a follower of Jesus, we find that He will guide and direct us. He counsels us in the areas of our lives that need to be cleaned up. He is our wonderful counselor. He reveals Himself as such. He is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He is a friend that doesn't judge us but loves us enough to tell us that we need to change some things in our lives. He helps us to see ourselves for who we really are. He counsels us into getting our lives on track. He reveals himself as the wonderful counselor. But when the enemy comes in to try to steal the seed of faith that has been planted into the freshly cultivated heart, God shows up, not just as the wonderful counselor, but as the mighty God. When we struggle in those early days of our walk with him, and we feel like we don't have the strength to continue. The mighty God shows up and begins to drive back the enemy. When we are at our weakest and we cry out to Jesus, He shows up as the mighty God. He is the almighty God. And He is the all-powerful King. And there is none beside Him. At the very mention of His name, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I like what the psalmist writes in 97 when he says, The Lord reigns, let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of isles be glad. Clouds and darkness surround him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. A fire goes before him and burns up his enemies round about. His lightnings light the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the Lord of the whole earth, the heavens declare His righteousness, and all the people see His glory. That is the mighty God we serve. That is the mighty God that when I'm in trouble, I can simply whisper His name and He shows up. We've got to understand that there is no one and there is no thing that can withhold Him from coming to our rescue. He has never been defeated. He's never been in a fight that he can't win. He is the mighty God. And he is as close as the mention of his name. He reveals himself to us as 
wonderful counselor, and then he reveals himself as the mighty God. And the longer we walk with him, the more he reveals himself to us. He manifests himself to us according to the need in our lives. I'm going to repeat that because I think it's worth saying again. He manifests himself to us according to the need in our lives. When we don't know him, he shows up and helps us to understand that we can rely on him and we can trust him. And when we need him to protect us or to pull us out of troubles, he reveals himself as mighty. And as we continue down the road of Christianity, we know him as counselor and we see his might and we know that we can trust him. He starts to reveal himself as the everlasting father. And our understanding and revelation of him continues to grow. I heard one person say that heaven is not just streets of gold and walls of jasper. Heaven is the never-ending revelation of who God is. Because it will take all of eternity for him to fully reveal himself to us. God is beyond finding out in our finite minds. Don't ever get to the place where you think that you know all there is to know about God. He reveals himself as the everlasting father. Over the past year, God has been showing me some things about how he views me. I'm so thankful to have our beautiful daughter, McKenna. He's blessed us so greatly. He's been showing me that if I, being evil, according to Matthew 7, 11, know how to give good gifts... How much more will my Father in Heaven give good things to those who ask? I see this little girl growing and getting stronger, and I see at times she's struggling to get to her feet, but I just watch and, and let, her, let her struggle a little bit because I understand that she needs to build that strength. And there are times that she needs to do things on her own. Not that I'm ignoring her, but she has the ability to do things without my hand. It helps build strength. But there are times when I just want to pick her up and hold her. And, and there are times when she reaches out for me. I don't just turn my back on her and walk away. Of course, I'm going to come to her aid. I want to help her in any way I can. When she smashes her finger into the cupboard door that I told her not to open, I'm not just going to say, well, that's what you get. No, I'm going to pick her up and I'm going to nurture her. Because that's what fathers do. And again, if I, being evil, according to Matthew 7, 11, know how to be fatherly, how much more will the everlasting Father be merciful and kind and loving and nurturing toward me, His child? He loves us more than we could ever imagine. And He wants the very best for us. He's not just some big guy in the sky with a hammer waiting to pounce when we mess up. No, He is a good good father when we begin to understand Jesus on a deeper level we begin to see the different layers of who he is Jesus Christ is the wonderful counselor he is the mighty God he is the everlasting father and he is the prince of peace Isaiah 9 7 of the increase of of his government and peace, there will be no end. Another translation says it this way, his government and its peace will never end. When God is in complete control, there is peace. Wherever he reigns, peace is prevalent. When in the Garden of Eden before the fall of man, there was peace. However, as soon as Adam and Eve disobeyed God, peace was lost. Because of disobedience to God, peace was lost. As long as God is in control of a situation, there will be peace. His government and its peace will never end. Are there areas in your life where there is no peace? If we believe His word, that where Jesus Christ governs or rules, that there is peace and that his peace has no end, then it is, fair to, is it fair to say that the areas of our lives where we don't have peace, that Jesus Christ does not govern or rule in those areas? 
Are you at peace in your finances? We just went through an amazing series on giving. If Jesus Christ is not ruling over your finances, then you will not have peace in your finances. Do you have peace in your marriage? Do you have peace in your family? Do you have peace in your work? I want to challenge all of us to go home and sit down and start writing out the different areas or aspects of our lives and find the areas where we don't have peace. And that will tell us the areas of our lives that we have not allowed God to rule over. If there is sin in our lives, we will not have peace. If we are living in sin, whether it is blatantly or unknowingly, His peace will not be with us. We cannot live in sin and expect God's perfect peace to be upon us. So how do we find the kind of peace that Mr. Spafford had after losing four children? How do we find peace that helps us to say in the darkest of times, it is well with my soul? Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. The first step in finding peace is don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything everything. Over and over throughout scripture we read the phrase fear not and yet there are so many people including Christians who battle fear on a consistent basis. Fear and worry are synonymous with one another along with anguish, apprehension, concern, doubt, misery, pain, uncertainty, uneasiness. Do you feel uneasy about anything in your life? Are you, are you facing doubt or uncertainty about areas of your life? In the time in which we are living, fear and worry are woven into our culture. Sometimes I believe we need to do, all we need to do is just stop talking and start praying. In a message I preached in June, I spoke about Jairus and his daughter. When people came and told him not to bother Jesus any longer because his daughter was dead, Jesus looked at him and said, don't be afraid. Before Jairus could say anything, don't be afraid, only believe. Don't speak your doubt, because life and death are in the power of the tongue. The reason a lot of people have worry and fear is because they speak those thoughts into existence. Don't worry about anything, instead pray about everything. Every time a negative thought comes into your mind, pray about it. Pray before you speak. Pray about everything. This week I was heading to a a location that I absolutely dread going to. And it has nothing to do with the location, but it has everything to do with the person at the location. (laughs) I've, I've met some pretty awful people in my life. But... This, this woman has got to be the most miserable person I've ever met. Always angry. And, and I don't even know why. And, and I'm not exaggerating this because there, I, there are a couple coworkers that have been there and I let them know where I was going and they're like, oh, have fun with that one. <laughs> so as I park my van, I start to pray that God would help me but also that his peace would flow from me. I prayed that he would help her and that she would feel his peace. I am telling you, it was an absolute miracle. She was kind, she was talkative, and at the end of the inspection, she said, drive safe and have a Merry Christmas. I smiled and said something similar back, and when I turned, my mouth dropped open. Here's the thing. I don't know why I was surprised. I got in my van and called one of the coworkers that had dealt with her and told him the story. And I called another coworker and told him the story. But in both of which, with our Christians, they 
two were amazed. But again, why? Why the amazement? That really convicted me. Knowing that our everlasting Father wants to give good gifts, why do we run to everyone but Him when we are worried or afraid? Why is it that when we turn every which way outside of speaking to our wonderful counselor, why do we go other places? Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. And the second point I want to make, tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. God inhabits the praises of His people. When we begin to lift Him up, His glory begins to come down. Praise is a powerful weapon because it builds faith. When you feel like you've hit rock bottom and the devil has thrown everything he has at you and you lift up your head and say, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When you can say in the turmoil, rejoice not against me, O mine enemy, for when I fall, I shall arise. And when I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. There is power in that type of praise. That no matter what I am going through, I am going to praise God anyway. When we get to the place in our walk with God that thanksgiving is our first go-to in every situation, there will be no stopping you. If you don't have peace in your life, I pray that God would give you a new perspective today. That we can rejoice in the Lord always. No matter what the circumstance, no matter the issue you may be facing, praise God anyway. Stop looking around at what's wrong in your life, what's wrong in this world, and start looking up and praising God that you have breath in your lungs. Psalm 34 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. The last verse of Mr. Spafford's song, It is well, goes as stated. And Lord, haste the day when my faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound and the Lord shall descend. Even so, It is well with my soul. He understood that he wasn't living for this life. His focus was on the next. He could write in the darkest of days of his life, It is well with my soul because he understood that this world is not my home. I'm going to ask God for what I need and then I'm going to thank him for all he has done. And I'm not going to worry about anything, but I'm going to pray about everything because I know that someday that eastern sky is going to break open. And the King of kings and the Lord of lords is going to come and take us home. That is what I am living for. I'm living to see his return. And while I'm here, my focus is going to be on the eternal things of God, and I'm, not going to, and I'm not going to focus on what's wrong in my life because my focus is on Jesus Christ and His return. I will be able to say, it is well with my soul. As we stand. Philippians 4, 8 and 9. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. Right now, begin to tell God what you need. And then we need to begin to thank Him for all He has done. Is there anyone here today that is willing to step out in faith and come up to this altar and give God praise for what He has done in your life? For it is then that you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. 
if you've lost your peace, if you have fear and anxiety in your life, if depression is trying to destroy you, I am asking you to step out of your seat and come down to the front and lift up your hands and your face to heaven and begin to praise Him for all He has done. Isaiah tells us, God will give us the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. I want to invite anybody that wants to come down here. Anybody that needs peace in your life. Several weeks ago, McKenna started, as, as we would drop her off at daycare, she would just cry and cry and cry and scream. Finally, one day, I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to pray peace over her. So I prayed peace over her mind and over her spirit. And that morning when I dropped her off, she was as happy as could be. I absolutely believe that God is about to impart peace upon anybody that wants to receive it. So right now, lift your hands and lift your voice and begin to receive it. In Jesus' name, God, the peace that I have, God, I loose it unto this place right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we release peace in this place. God, peace of mind and peace of spirit. That the Prince of Peace would come into this place. God, that your peace that passes all understanding would come upon this congregation, would come upon those who are listening online. In the name of Jesus Christ, God, we give you the glory and we give you the praise. Hallelujah, Jesus.